chapter 1, verse 33. He then goes about and he heals and the whole city is gathered again, the whole region. He heals a man and tells him not to say anything, but as it is, if you were healed, you would tell everybody, so he did. And so he couldn't even enter into the city again. He goes to Capernaum again and says, And again he entered into the city after many days, and it was noise that he was in the house, and straightway many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed where the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, it was interesting, he says, when he saw their faith, not the faith of the man. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Verse 6, but there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why doth this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Verse 8, and immediately when Jesus perceived in the spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why are reason ye these things in your hearts? Verse 9, For whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say rise and take up the bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power enough to forgive sins, he say to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up the bed and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose and took up the bed and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. Jesus is the great healer. He is the physician of our souls and bodies. The excerpt that follows this says, when he sat at meat with them, uh, when he sat at table with uh, Levi and the others, he was re and he was rebuked by the Pharisees for doing so. He said, I came not, they that are holy, not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. What that tells us is that sin is compared to a sickness. The church looks at our sickness as sin. Uh, so rather than looking at sin in a juridical, forensic manner, which it, it is there, but it's not emphasized, we emphasize that we're sick inside. We need our Lord to heal us. With that in mind, look at the he oh, I invite you to look at this healing as a picture of how we relate to the healer. What you so what do you mean by that? Well, there are three groups of people in this excerpt. All right. The first group were those that were the press, the atonoklon, the, the multitude, the press, that kept people from coming to Jesus, kept people from coming to the healer. This can be us if we hinder people from coming to God. God is the healer, and sometimes our own religion, our faith or unhealthy faith, can cast Christianity in a bad light. The Lord warned of this. His first rebuke was to the Pharisees. Not that religion is wrong, but we end up having a bad attitude. And he said, 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. You need to go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Matthew 23, 13. And then he said later on, shortly after, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one disciple. And when he has made you, make him twofold more the child of Gehenna of hell than yourselves. Christians are their own worst enemies. And culture has rejected Christianity because we approach Protestant Christianity, American Christianity, Evangelical Christianity, for the most part, does not portray God as the merciful Father who wants to heal us, as the physician of our souls and bodies. Instead, he is presented as a cosmic judge who wants to strike us down with a thunderbolt. And that's not the Lord. The Lord said that he wants to heal us. Turn and you will be healed and I will heal you. He says through the prophets. Again, Paul warns of this in Romans chapter 2, where he says, uh, For the name of God, for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles as it is written. God's name is blasphemed because of who we are sometimes. So, this is the first group we can find ourselves in. We can find ourselves as those who hinder people from coming to our Lord. The second group is this. Those that brought the paralytic to Jesus. There is a sense in which we can be whole, we can be healthy spiritually, and we can go and bring others to God in unison so that they can be healed. St. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 6, he says, Brethren, if any man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual, notice there's a condition here, a qualification, ye which are spiritual, restore, uh, ye, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of meekness, considering yourselves, lest you also be tempted. We who are spiritual, in other words, ones who are pedomatiki, who are led by the Spirit of God, we can help recover somebody who is overtaken in a fall. You which are spiritual, he says, consider yourselves, but then also bring people back to a spiritual walk with our Lord. The scripture says that the Effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. We can make an impact on people's lives. Sometimes we get discouraged because we see our loved ones that perhaps don't take their faith seriously. Or they, were, they grew up nominally Christian or Orthodox. And it hasn't really taken root. But we can be a light to them and bring them to the Lord in his time. The third group is obviously the paralytic, the one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. We may find ourselves sick, paralyzed spiritually. Now, there's a difference between being spiritually whole, healthy, and you know, the normal sicknesses that attend us. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. First John 1 9. And if we don't have amartia, if we say we don't have sin, we deceive ourselves. That's it's wrong. But we can be healthy. There's a difference. We don't have to think that we are completely uh, sick or not, if we're holy, whole in Christ. The scripture tells us that there are several sins that can afflict us. There is the sin of pride, 
The prophet said, let not the foot of pride come against me. And we call these the eight deadly sins in the, in the Latin tradition, they're the seven, but we call them the eight. Uh, pornea, fornication, the desire of uh, sexual relations outside marriage. Gluttony, gastromagia, the desire of our stomach. And really the stomach is really the, the gateway uh, to a lot of things. We could go on, kenodoxia, vainglory, where we do things for the wrong motive. We do things because we want praise of men. And of course, if we do things for the praise of men, we can't really follow the Lord. Jesus said, how can you believe which receive honor one from another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? As we approach midpoint and Lent, let's examine our hearts where we're at. Are we hindering people from coming to Christ and be healed? Are we ourselves in need of healing in the sense that we have been wounded, we've broken a bone spiritually so that we can say with David, the bones which you have broken may they be restored. Or perhaps we are hindering our Lord from healing others. May God bless us and keep us and may we be ever increasing in spiritual strength and health. Amen.